Once was a land of woe and strife Where the people were bereft of hope They prayed to their gods of might and light To deliver the heroes of old Instead they got Heroes, did you hear the quotes in my voice Of moral ambiguity They may help or may not help you at all Depends on what's in it for them They kick and they punch and they maul and they smash They lie and they scheme and they burn and they slash Succeed or fail, it adds to the tale Dungeons and debacles starts now Well, hello adventurers and welcome to this episode of the Dungeons and Debacles podcast I am your host and Dungeon Master, Kevin. Going around the table, John. Hello. I play Lunadas, Elvin Monk, slash Jacques, Dorvin Merchant. He's French. <laughs> and I just shared a picture of Jacques in the uh, Discord. I, ju- I, just, I just drew that out real quick. It's, it's not super accurate. He's a dwarf. He has a beard. Okay. <laughs> We'll have to uh, post that up on the website. Uh, Shane. That's me playing Alexander the Human Bart. And Anna. I'm used to being last. That's really weird for me. Um, it's because I he doesn't play... like it. I guess so. Wow. I play Vicala, uh, the Paladin Drow. Um, yeah, that's who I play. Drowadin. Drowadin, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and Blake. Hi, I'm Blake, and I play Juliet, the Dragonborn Eldritch Knight slash Wizard. I still don't know why I do the the whole archetype thing, but whatever. It's just it's really weird to me, like say Eldritch Knight instead of Fighter, because I'm so used to like second ed, third ed, where you would just say there were no archetypes. I don't know, really weird, but it just gives people every week the same deal. Uh, <laughs> and uh, our birthday girl, Hannah. I'm Hannah, and I'll be playing Talia, the human rogue. And yes, it is my birthday. Yay! Yay. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Birthday, birthday, birthday. birthday. I'm just wondering if Julia we should... Julia Anivalsale, young human. I'm just wondering if we should go ahead and make it Talia's birthday, too. Uh Oh, get her into her teens? Yeah, just to make it consistent. Has it been long enough? Uh, it's probably. been one year. About. Well, we were in the Fae Wild. Time goes weird there. So, yeah, you're 13 now. <laughs> that All way right, it makes you guys it have a, a teenager on your hands. It's easier Best to remember. Uh, and now, now we'll definitely have to do the episode of uh, "Are You There, Raven Queen?" It's me, Talia. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! As uh, Talia enters her uh, womanhood. All right, so uh, oh God, is, is Vicky going to teach her about menstruation and how to deal with that? Is that something well, else? Vicky had do? never had a menstruation, so she doesn't know. Yeah, no, yeah. Talia. Well, don't menstruate. It's going to have to be Alexander. He's the only human. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That will be super awkward. I can't wait to record that. It'll be a bonus episode. <laughs> right? <laughs> Both of you to assume that I'm actually going to do that. Oh, it's okay. I'll, I'll play, play it for you. <laughs> sure, I guess. All right. So uh, on the last episode of the Dungeons and Debacles podcast, it seems like it's been forever ago. Um, you guys were uh, greeted in the night by uh, the Red Talon Sish, who uh, showed up in Talia's bedroom uh, to claim the artifact, the Boots of Fadel. Uh, it would be an understatement to say that Talia did not want to let them go. Uh, in the process, she got a little sassy with the uh, the Black Dragonborn, and uh, he ended up uh, picking her up and throwing her across the room, uh, which was probably enough of motivation to uh, give the boots over. Um, also, um, your, I'm not going to say friend, your, I guess, party member, um, Nifron was given instructions by Sish to go do something. You're not quite sure what it was, but uh, he said he was leaving the party. But before he left, he wanted to be able to track you down, and in the process, uh, gave Vicalia 
a, uh, a gift. She is now blessed slash cursed by Loth uh, as he touched her forehead and gave her this uh, spider mark that now appears on her forehead. Um, he also mentioned um, something about her father um, and kind of left that vague. Um, he also said that uh, there was a way to find him now that she had received this mark and she could fill him in the room, but there was also another person far to the west that she could fill that person's presence as well. Um, so I think that basically catches us up so far. So currently, uh, Nifron is left, Sish is left with the boots, and all of you are currently in Talia's room. So... I guess uh, you, you want to talk about what just happened. Wow. Talia's uh, gonna uh, Talia's gonna get up and brush herself off and, and say, who the fuck was that guy? That was Sish. He's a servant of our mistress. My mistress. A mistress. Everyone. Well, one day, I'm gonna have his head on a spike. I don't think that's really a good idea. He's yeah, on our side for now. But vaguely. Okay. It's, still it, it's good to have goals. Don't bring the girl's dream down. If she wants a head on the spike, give her a head on the spike. But I mean, it's yeah. was pretty strong last time Alexander and I saw him. You mean when you betrayed and murdered your former companions? I you know, that doesn't like sound like that. your business. How do you even know about that? Because they told me about it when I went to rescue you from the prison, where you'd been put in prison for murdering your former companions. That's right. Uh, are you on our side? That's not murder. That's um, you know, after action. Eh, yeah, it's kind of murder. I mean, legally, it's murder. And also, awesome. it's a reason to be kind of careful around you guys. And I'm pretty sure, I, I would count as self-defense. I mean, we didn't start the fight. We sided with uh, Basish there, and then the others were like, no way, Jose, and then tried to kill us. But um, I do have to say, Talia, I'm very, very proud of you for standing up for yourself. That's an important do thing my best. to do. Even though you got beat, but okay. <laughs> That's future goals. One day. Future goals. I like talk my forehead like, mm, can I make this disappear? Mm. <laughs> uh, that mark, uh, is that permanent? I hope not, because I don't want everybody to know who I am if I need to do some recon right away. Well, Gerdra, you kind of stick out no matter what. I'll have you know, vows are the best at disguises and stealth. Well, I thought you didn't do that because you, you're a drow. It's a coward's you way. Take that if you want to, we can. Well, okay. It's Fair a coward's enough. way. But you can still do it, of course. So you're the best at cowards. No, we're, we're the best at stealth and disguise. For fun and games. For playing tricks, not for combat, because it's a coward's way. Okay. Uh, Alexander, how do you feel about all of this? What's your... What are you thinking? You're a little quieter than normal? I mean, I don't really have the... I don't think we really have the strength to really change anything that's going on right now. Uh, we're kind of just like cut in the cog until something happens if we want to stop. Why would you want to stop? I didn't say I did. I said if we did want to stop, we don't really have a way to. But why would you want to? Huh. Uh, there are a number of reasons why we wanted to stop. Uh, you know, it's not good for our reputation. Well, I always figured if, you know, this whole lot of thing doesn't pan out, I would open up a bakery marry <laughs> an elf or do you really think I'm gonna stop 
I don't know. I could imagine you, you know, opening up a bike bakery, um, you know, bakery by spiders, for spiders, of spiders. Maybe making lizards for dinner for (laughs) spiders. That'd be great. (laughs) What is? I'm just imagining uh, Vicalia and Talia moving to New England and opening up like a muffin slash cupcake shop. Uh, yes. <laughs> served in skulls. Exactly. Well, the half dozen would be served in skulls. Yeah, you, it, skulls are not easy to come by unless they're goblins or something, and those are pretty disgusting. Precisely. Because it's Talia's birthday, Luno made her a cake. A vegan. A vegan cake with with knives for candles tell me it's your birthday oh my goodness uh yeah totally knew that about myself because i'm not an orphan (laughs) that's nothing to do with anything else it's my birthday yep well what do you want to do for your birthday when you have a birthday you always you know get a present or surprise or something it's uh traditional Yes, for my birthday, they surprised me with deadly combat. I had to fight eight spiders in her age. I was only given a dagger and an apple pie. <laughs> uh, what was the apple pie for? But you get apples in the It was her dark. birthday. Exactly. You throw it at a spider as they think it's a human being. They start munching on it. Then you jump on their back and you stab them. And then you get to eat their delicious carcass. <laughs> Do you it's like a pinata of sort, even though I don't know what it is. <laughs> a pinata is a kind of fluffy little animal, very adorable, related to a chinchilla. And I believe it's a traditional dwarven festivity that you get one live and you hang it up by one of its back legs and hit it with sticks. Till it dies. That sounds amazing. Is it I a know, real right? animal? Yes. Um no. Really hot no. on this. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it's like the middle of the night. We should probably go to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> that asshole our... woke me up and stole my boots. Stole well, them? Yeah. Couldn't he, he wait them. for the morning? It was mildly inconsiderate. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. I guess, you know, he's an asshole. Like all yeah. lizards. Looking at you, Juliet. <laughs> Steal all my cupcakes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, stealing your cupcakes? What? When we first met, you promised me food and cupcakes at the camp, and I did not get that yet. I haven't stolen them from you, have I? No, but you promised me. Well, that's we what you'll met, get first remember? thing at Not Kala. delivering on a contract is basically theft. Which uh, is apropos because uh, you agreed to get the boots. And if you had kept the boots, that would have been theft. <laughs> I'm a rogue. That's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> that's, uh, I don't think that's the entire identity of rogues. That's a stereotype. Yeah, I feel like you're generalizing okay here. Types. Says the drow. <laughs> <laughs> I so it's okay if they're not about drow. Out of my skin. Hmm. Are you not okay with dark blue people? Not all drow are dark blue. Some are black. Damn! Oh, I scott in my own game. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get some sleep, and tomorrow we can plan our next move. We're gonna Sounds get a good. boat. I'm yeah, gonna we... go ahead and just. Uh... Hmm. Sorry. We get to buy a boat. Yep. Oh, I we forgot. Name our boat. We can name our boat. Oh, we can buy a whole boat. Aren't we just gonna like, like rent a boat? I guess. And then yeah, we kill the sure. captain. Ours. That. Mm. Do you? I don't know you, about that one. Do any of you actually have any skills in, uh, in boating? In sailing, I don't. It can't be that hard. You put up the sail, you put the pointy end in the direction, and you're good to go. We've been on a boat before. We know what we're doing. Juliet's probably read a book on it. It's probably fine. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you have a lot of rivers and the caves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of this guy. You know what? How about we go on separate boats if you want to do that? 
That seems wildly inefficient. I mean, you, I'm not trying to get lost. And you guys are trying to talk about killing the captain and stealing the boat. No, buying that the boat. That wouldn't get us lost. Why would it's we a river. Buy a you just go, boat? there's two directions. You can go upstream um, or downstream. You can't get lost on a river. You might not remember, but the uh, asshole dude dropped a huge bag of money on our on my bed. We have enough money to buy a boat and uh, hire a crew. Do you want to? Plus, you have all that money left over from when we robbed those people. One piece of the I adventure. Do have a shit ton of gold left. Too bad you're wanted in most places, and it's going to be hard to uh, to use it. <laughs> yeah, just like Luffy. We might as well just fucking start a whole smuggling ring. Jacques McSweeney might be able to make it rain, though. Well, Jacques yeah. McSweeney spent most of his money on that temple. But he does have enough money left to probably buy a boat. Probably. Boats are quite expensive. Uh, it's so, not in Talia. To, to remind people, it, it, Sash gave us 500 platinum? Correct. It's 5,000 gold? Which, which I put into my, into my bag. Okay. Either way, we have enough money to buy a boat. Or at the or, very or, least, hire yeah. one. For and a long kill distance. the captain. We're not killing the captain. He needs to get us to our place. But that's the whole fun of hiring a boat. That's the sport? Exactly. Why not just catch your own lease? Leave some uh, ship hands in the circulation, you know? I mean, that is a valid point. Hmm. In any event, it's like going back to bed. Yes. Well, bed. meditation. All right. Uh, is there anything else you want to do? No, not really. All right. So everybody... I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to do something small. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, like one of my old dragon bones, sco- dragon bone skulls from back in the Fey, and I'm going to wrap like a small ribbon on it. And like take a candle from downstairs, still like one from the bar, and like give it to Tally if it's a birthday present. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me for your skull collection. Um, so you're able to go downstairs, and there's it's the, the common room is empty. Um, you don't have any trouble finding a, a candle um, on one of the tables. But uh, give me a, a dexterity check. And this is how the bar burned down, guys. <laughs> right. I don't know why World 20 is loading so slow today. Second. Oh, boy. That's um, a nine. So it's not masterwork, but it's also not like a jacked up wonky, like third grader making an ashtray in ceramics class for uh, dad's birthday. Um,. So it's passable. It's something. <laughs> so uh, you stay up late and making this thing. Everybody wakes up the next morning, and uh, you're starting to hear some movement down in the uh, the common room below. Uh, can I just like sneak a little peek and see what that is? Uh, downstairs, yeah. Uh, stealth, I assume. Um, yeah, if you want a stealth. Fifteen. Uh, are you in your armor? Uh, yes, but I think adamantine armor doesn't give me disadvantage. Am I right? Uh, no, mithril, that's mithril doesn't. Oh, adamantine yes, means you can't be critted. So roll it's a ten. Then. Mm. Okay, so you make it up to the the top of the stairs and look down, and you can see the uh, the innkeeper here, and it appears to be. Um, Two humans sitting at a table, um, eating some breakfast. Um, the innkeeper is going to uh, look up the the stairs because he hears uh, your big heavy creaking at the top of the stairs and gives you a nod. I look at him like, mm. just keep staring. <laughs> at this point, it's like seven a.m. or yeah, seven a.m. I'm gonna wait for everybody to wake up and just sit at the top of the stairs. 
looking down. Then be here or see what's happening. Okay. Every now and then, you know, while you're waiting for this, you're just up at the top of the stairs and the innkeeper every now and then will catch a glance up there and see you. And uh, he's getting kind of creeped out. <laughs> I give him like I, I do like with my like I, I take my tongue out like mm, I, like do with my eye like this. Whenever he looks. <laughs> can I can I get you something? All uh, right, breakfast. All right. Uh, make it four eggs, two spiders, one ostrich. No, uh, we're that's fresh. only three eggs. We're fresh out of spiders and ostriches. Uh, do you have a horse? Do you have a dog? One of the two is fine. No, they don't lay eggs. Oh boy. Uh, well, just bring me whatever you can and good strong alcohol, please. Alrighty then. And he disappears okay, for Jesus. a while and comes back out with these a days. plate of uh, sausages and uh, some eggs and. Uh, a pint mug of something and says uh, you want me to put it at the table here or uh, you want to eat it at the top of the steps uh, if you bring it to the top of the steps I'll give you an extra silver oh uh, have it your way he walks up Thank to the you. top of the steps and hands you the plate and the mug I started like drinking like if anybody's like trying to come down I'm like looking at him like a mean stare and, like I didn't like let him pass but like I'm giving him a mean stare as he passes this room and uh he gives you kind of like this weird look and walks back down the steps uh give me a perception check just this weird ass drow sitting there in full plate armor that's well eating dog's eggs <laughs> So uh, he gets down to the top of the steps or bottom of the steps, and you hear him mutter something, but you can't make out what it is. Like, like, what was that? Oh, nothing. Just talking to myself. Okay, can you give me? Uh, are you are you insane? Well, I'm not the one lurking up at the top of the steps eating a plate of eggs. <laughs> this will end well. Speaking of plate of eggs, can you give me more? I'll pay you extra. Oh, well, sure. And he disappears into the kitchen. I'll be angrily eating like, God damn, Juliet doesn't feed me. <laughs> Juliet's gonna walk up uh, after waking up. <laughs> um, Bacala, what are you doing at the top of the stairs? <laughs> like, the, the Mouth stuff like no 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 no. Usually upset at Juliet. Okay, um, I'll leave you alone, and I'll go get some breakfast, and you can stay here at the top of the stairs, being weird. I'm just gonna wait until everybody wakes up, and only then go downstairs. <laughs> All right. So is everybody up at this mm. point? I you guess yeah. And Luno's going to eat a, a, a kale salad breakfast with radishes. Uh, they don't have any kale. They do have radishes, uh, but what they have is like mustard greens. That'll work, possibly. Talia's going to roll out of bed groggy and go downstairs and get just food. That's all she's going to say is food. Okay. We'll just... Uh... <laughs> For the sake of brevity, uh, everybody, you know, gets their breakfast and eats. Is everybody sitting at the same table, or are you discussing anything, or are you basically just getting some food um, in preparation of uh, heading out? Uh, actually, eating. as I as they eat breakfast, I, I just go outside with, like, just a bit of leftover, like, bread, just, like, numbing on it. Standing outside, um, like, lifting up my hoodie so people can't really see how much I would just... Try to listen if I see something, I hear something around me that's suspicious or maybe interesting. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me, let me roll a die to see what the weather is like today. Good old luck die. Okay. So um, this morning it is kind of overcast. You see the sun peek through the clouds like every now and then. It doesn't appear that 
rain is coming. It's just uh, just a gray, overcast day. Uh, it's very good for me, man. Mm-hmm. So as you look around, um, when you go outside, you're seeing that the uh, the town here is kind of coming to life. Um, you are seeing um, some workers moving some logs up the street here, up to the docks. Um, you're hearing the the ting of a hammer coming from the blacksmith shop. You see some uh, vendors who are putting out their wares. Um, there's some uh, people out on the street at this point that are entering shops. Um, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't seem like it's in full swing, but it seems like uh, it's getting going. Uh, I don't notice anything specifically interesting or hear anything suspicious. As if maybe we've been uncovered, you know? No, it seems like uh, you're kind of in a in a sleepy little town that's waking up. Okay, let's get on dumb and wait outside the door with my gear ready. Alright. So is everybody getting their stuff together and heading out? Yep. 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 Okay, so uh, we'll say you exit the inn. Um, what do you want to do? As he heads out, Luno puts on his disguise. Okay. Using his ring of disguise self, he is now Jacques McSweeney, a dwarf with a beard. Okay. So, uh, what do you want to do? We must now get a boat for to go down the river to Kala. Um, who are you supposed to be again? I just want to I get am. the the identity straight. I am Jacques McSweeney of the Clan McSweeney. I am a dwarven businessman. Can you not tell from my full and bushy beard? Honestly, you all look the same. You look like halflings or whatever. Oh. Halflings are not nearly so gloriously bearded as we are. Well, we have beards. I mean, also not as stinky. That's an easy comparison, by the nose. <laughs> yes, dwarves are famous for our stink. It is because of all the cheese and wine. Yeah, you call it musk, but cheese. Yes. Uh, what's uh, Jacques McSweeney look like? He's a dwarf. Is a beard. Please see picture in Discord for reference. <laughs> yes, I shared a picture. We'll put that up on the. I also put it on the uh, Facebook page. Okay, <laughs> we'll put it on the website as well. It's literally just two circles, uh, one oblong with brown crayon drawing over the head and beard locations of these two circles. He paid me 50 bucks to make that. <laughs> it's all content, right? Because he's a merchant. Merchants are good with money. Alright, so uh, you're exiting this in... What are you doing? You have to get a boat. Yeah, let's go Let's go get a boat. So currently you're down here at this inn. The, the docks are up here. You can see them from where you are. Um, currently, there looks like there's... Uh, couple of dock workers out here and you see uh, four boats that are docked. Um, They're flat bottom boats that are probably all big enough to suit your needs. There is one crew that is loading some barrels and some horses onto one of those boats and the other boat is offloading some crates and crew members are unhitching some horses that are uh, pulling the uh, boats upstream. So... The boat that's loading the crates, you see three crew members, and there's a uh, a uh, human tending to, or uh, not a human, a uh, wood elf tending to some horses. Uh, the other boat that's uh, offloading, um, there's two elves that are unhitching horses from the boats. Uh, these boats, how big are they? How big do they appear? Um, each one of them, they're river boats that look like they're used for moving a lot of goods so uh, each one of them you think is probably about you know 30 to 40 feet long um, about uh, 15 feet wide you think that uh, you would probably be able to get your horses and uh, cart on here and take it down river but uh, if you did that they probably wouldn't have a lot of room for cargo so you would probably have to, to pay them for whatever their expenses would be. Okay. So, Alexander, you're the best talker here, I think. 
Can you maybe yeah. acquire a boat for us? I mean, I could. Uh, is there... Are there any like uh, people working on boats around? Like, uh, like we, I see the boats, but is there anybody that I can explicitly tell is in charge of like a boat? Um, the if you look at the one where they're loading crates onto this thing, um, I mean, it, there appears to be like one person who is like you know writing something down and you know giving orders to, to some of the people that are loading crates um, you look at the other one where there's uh, they're pulling stuff off the boat offloading those rolling crates um, you see you know two elves that are unhitching the horses uh, from the boats and um, a couple of other elves but not really anybody that looks like there's in, somebody in charge they all look like they're working to get stuff off the boat Okay, uh, I'd like to walk up to the person that's been uh, handing out orders and telling people what to do. Okay, um, so that is the boat that was loading some crates on. Uh, there's three crew members. Um, they're loading the crates right now, and you walk up to this elf, and um, this elf appears to be probably in his middle years for an elf. He's got kind of like this... Uh, uh, long brown hair and kind of like a little bit of a scruff where he doesn't look like he shaves um, and he's currently attending him to uh, some horses and uh, you walk up to him talk to him hey uh, quick question uh, what can I do for you uh, do you know a boat that would be capable of bringing uh, say six people and a uh, a a couple horses in our load uh, down the way yeah I might be able to do it uh, where are you heading uh, cute dramatic did uh, we decide on Luskane or Kala uh, I think we decided Kala Okay. No, we just made a really good town. argument for this game. We we decided there there's a little town to the north of Kala, and we were going to stop there. That's what I remember. Okay. Let's uh, bring yeah, up the world map now. real quick. Okay, so here's Kala, and Light you guys Dale. are up here. Yeah, it was Lightdale. Yeah, we're trying to go down to Lightdale. Lotdale, you say? Well, uh, we ain't we ain't going off uh, that side of the river out on the on the big one. Uh, we're uh, kind of headed down uh, to uh, Hedgedale. I could probably take you that far, and that's probably about I don't know two days walk, or probably about a day on horses over to Lotdale, across the land. Okay, that sounds good to me. How so, much uh, do you think it'd come up to? Well, let's see. We we had a load they was taken down, and uh, let's see if we get six people on there and your horse. You say it's just six people and horses. Horses and a uh, a little follow behind on the horses for our stuff. What do you mean follow cart. behind? Like a cart. Oh, a cart, huh? Uh, well, maybe we can load up some of our. Uh, goods on a cart if you got some room but I think we'd be able to work it in but uh, we're not going to be able to take all our cargo so of course you'd have to compensate us for what we can't take down but uh, I'd say we could probably do that for you for 100 gold sure that sounds good enough for me alrighty well we're leaving here probably within the hour are you ready to go yeah, I believe so. Let me go grab everybody. Alrighty. Well, or either that or y'all can just... Uh, we got an inn over there. We can come get you when uh, we're ready to go once we get some stuff cleared out of here. We'll, of course, have to move some stuff back off the boat. Sure thing. And uh, I didn't catch your name, stranger. Uh, it is... One second, Kevin. What's, I need to figure out what my fake name that I got... Whenever we did that uh, crossing borders thing. Oh, you had your al alias going to Luskane? Yeah. 
Uh, I, sh- I believe I have. Was it Rod Swanson? I think so. I think it was Rod Swanson. So let's just go with that. Uh, name's Rod Swanson. All righty. Well, my, my name's Yev, and this is my boat here. It's the, the river's blessing. Uh, but uh, if y'all wait about an hour, uh, we'll come get you. Sure thing. Thank you. I will uh, head over back to the inn to get everybody on the same. Okay. Thought we were all with you, but okay. Oh, were you guys? Uh, I mean, you we were near oh. you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I walk over to the party and tell them what's good. Hundred gold to there. Uh, he'll be ready in like an hour or so. We just have to get our stuff ready to get on. That sounds the most excellent. Uh, but he can leave. bring us to Lightdale since he's not going on that side. But he, uh, he said he's fine. Bring us to Hedgedale, Doesn't which matter, is basically just as good. I do not know. Oh, um, that's isn't that on the Luskane side? Uh, kinda. Kinda. Yeah, and Luskane was... don't get along. There's a bit of a a border friction, if you will. Um, Judging by the map, they are both less game, both Lightdale and Edgedale. Yes, I understand that, but we'll just have to be careful crossing to the Kala side. I'm sure we'll figure it out. If my name isn't Rod Swanson. Is that your new name? Maybe, Maybe. Name yes. Rod Swanson. My name is Rod Swanson to the, the boat man. Oh, I am okay. Jacques McSweeney of the Clan McSweeney. I am a dwarf. I'm happy oh, that we all, all uh, accumulated that name. I guess we should all have different um, aliases, right? Yeah, everybody has the first name Haquez, but everybody has different last names, right? I don't think that'll work very well. Um, unless we were like a clan of dwarves. And our growl companion. Talia? The color? Do you... Who's yeah, that? I have an alias. I've always used it when I went to uh, lesser places such as dwarven bars. Yes, dwarves are very lesser. Because they're those more. Yes, I would call myself Vic. That was my alias. Vic. Um, isn't that a little yes. obvious? What are you Only if people lower it know that she is Vicala. How about Zach? Exactly. What? How about you call yourself Zach? Instead of Zach. Yeah. That's too ridiculous. Hmm. See through it. Vic, it is. Um, Talia, do you have an idea for an alias? Jessica. That's a nice name. She was my sister, kind of. Oh, um, was she like your best I friend? I you were an orphan. She was the family that my fa- my mom lived, my mom and I lived with before they all died. Oh, um, I'm sorry to hear that, but it's nice that you're putting her memory there. Well, it's a better name than the other names I, I have in my past. You have other names? Probably. And, and Talia's going to sh- shrug her shoulders and, and just head towards the boat. Or go to sit down. <laughs> All right, so we'll say that the uh, the hour goes by and uh, Yev comes to the end and lets you know that the uh, the boat's ready to go. Uh, we're about uh, ready to go, uh, Rod. Uh, you and your, your crew ready? Sure am. Uh, I look at everybody. Do we have the horses here? We throw the horses onto the boat with a, a trebuchet. Okay, We're good. Right check. What a cultured man. <laughs> well, yeah. What do you think? I use a catapult? Come on. You're right. What kind of looter uses a catapult? <laughs> so, uh, between their horses and your horses and the cart... Uh, it's a pretty tight fit on this uh, this boat, and you end up um, 
like hanging out towards the the back of this boat as it uh, pushes off the uh, the dock here the uh, three elves take these long poles and uh, push the boat away from the uh, riverbank here Yev tells you it's going to be about a three day journey down the river to Hedgedale and uh, after about six hours you're going to see the city of Fadel uh, to your left as you uh, come upon the meeting of uh, three rivers up here near the city Juliet's going to head to the other side of the boat <laughs> just so they're not in sight yeah um, Yev says, uh, Jack makes many eyes from no one. He stands very confidently at the thing of the boat, where the thing doesn't go in the water thing, the blocking thing, defense, defense of the boat. So, uh, Yev's I'm just you... sitting there to the dwarf. <laughs> Yev's gonna see you move over to the other side of the boat, and he's gonna say, uh, Well, the, the views over here, uh, we're just now, uh, passing Fadel over here on the left. Uh, y'all ever been there? It's a fabulous city. The business there is terrible. I'd never go to Fadale. I am standing here to scoff at them and their inability to deal with dwarves. We are superior to these high elves. Well, uh... I say so. I'm uh, not going to disagree with you there, uh, friend dwarf. They can be a little uh, haughty with their uh, noses up in the air and uh, with all them uh, troubles recently uh, between uh, the high elves and uh, us wood elves, but... Uh, I mean, I guess they're good enough people. I, I, I can't say I got much bad to say about them. Uh, you know, I usually get some pretty fair deals up here. I mean, they might look down on me a little bit, but uh, that's okay. I'm proud where I come from. Yeah, I think of that. I can get out of my fix. No. <laughs> yeah, well, both high elves and wood elves are kind of bad. I, I understand what you say. <laughs> and he kind of gives you a look for you being a drow. And uh, he says, uh, As you say, Dark Elf. As you say. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And I look at Arnett like Jacques and I'm like, He and I, we see eye to eye, yeah. Only because you are sitting down. You are also unnaturally tall. Well, you are unnaturally small. No, I am the right height. Dwarves are the right height. You can tell, because we have dwarves. Well, you bought uh, reaching my knee, so that's wonderful for me if I just bend it a little bit. <laughs> you are very strange and off-putting. I will now go eat some pudding, a favorite meal of the dwarves. Uh, do bring me some, okay? Why does no, Luna have I such a sure. dwarf identity? <laughs> He's just changing his... Changing his uh, his body to a dwarf. It's an illusion, and yes, he is now very, very much hamming it up. Ignorant as he is of dwarves, he nevertheless will play a dwarven stereotype. True to disguise, yeah. Yep. Do you even have a mining pick? <laughs> no, he's a dwarven merchant. God, don't be racist. So racist, man. Come on. Let me yeah. guess what you sell: rocks. No. Shiny rocks. The traditional food of the dwarves, fine cheeses. <laughs> made from mushrooms. Like you're, oh, you're not vegan, that's right, you're vegetarian. And yeah. Jacques isn't vegetarian, Jacques is a dwarf. Yeah, so you would say that hardy dwarves need meat to stay strong, right? No, they need fine cheeses and wines. That's how dwarves are strong. That's why they kick ass. <laughs> hmm. Cheese and wine. Check. Got the wine parn down. Moradin uses his war hammer to crush the enemies while drunk on wine, and then he eats cheese. Is Moradin a god in Suel? I don't know. Uh, he's god of the forge, right? Possibly. I just don't know if he's part of the pantheon in the world <laughs> <that> here. <laughs> well, it, as long as he's like uh, four e or five e, would be okay. All right, so. Uh... As you come upon uh, Fadel, you can see a variety of boats similar to yours docking at the city uh, docks. Uh, and you also notice there's some much larger tall ships with sails that look like they're more seafaring vessels. Your boat turns left and continues south onto a much larger river. And you're going to continue on for about another six hours. And the sun gets close to the horizon. And yeah, it's going to say... Uh, 
let's uh, find a place to set up and uh, camp for the night. And uh, he instructs the uh, other boatmen here to uh, start moving towards the shore. And after about another half mile, you see a clearing near the river, and the boat makes for the shore and uh, grounds itself a little bit, but not so much to where they won't be able to get it back off. Uh, they uh, throw down a, an anchor and move some uh, ropes off that uh, boat and find a uh, tree near this clearing uh, to where they can tie the boat to it. Um, the crew then begins to move the uh, horses and some camping supplies off the boat and set up camp before the uh, sun sets. Um, beyond the shore here, there's a uh, dense forest and you can hear the sounds of uh, creatures out here in the woods, uh, mostly crickets and frogs, but uh, you do do hear the howl of a wolf somewhere in the distance so you set up camp uh, you begin to uh, cook dinner uh, is there anything uh, uh, you want to do yeah I approach Juliet and I'm like so about my cupcakes um, when we get to Kala I'll buy you some I promise uh, I did the uh, drock give me pudding in the end no, dwarves do like, not share. Everybody <laughs> knows that dwarves are greedy. I'm gonna try and like start. I'm trying to like uh, scowl where he took the pudding from and just like munch on it like crazy. So tell me, Vikala, um, you're a follower of Lolf, and what do you want? I'm a growing drow and tall. I need food. Okay, I'm just hungry all the time. Don't judge uh, me. I wasn't going to say anything about that, but I'll I'll leave you alone. Um, <laughs> you look like you're um, eating. I'm like stuffed my, my face with like pudding, <laughs> <laughs> and I just follow Juliet around like no making the pudding, like seeing what, who she's gonna talk to. <laughs> All right, uh, is there anything anybody wants to do before you settle down for the night? Uh, I will play the flute for about like 30 minutes on the top deck. Okay. Flute? Well, I thought you were a bagpipes kind of person. Yeah, but I get plus two performance from the flute. It's metagaming, okay? <laughs> and also, I don't think they'd appreciate my genius. Oh, I see. And have forced them to drop us off at the next port. I guess so. Well, fair? Um, Julia. 10. <laughs> Juliet is going to cast the spell Alarm, which I always forget to cast when we sleep. Um, but she's going to put a 20-foot cube around her and, uh, to alert her if anything comes by that is not one of the boat's people or the party. Okay. I guess, actually, it's anyone... Well, I think you can... Uh, oh, I can designate creatures that won't set it off. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. So just putting that down. So... That uh, lasts for eight hours, so... You start putting that down, and uh, Yev's like, uh, what, you, what you doing there, lady? My concentration. Oh, well, um, never mind. I could, I could break it for a second. I'm just putting down an alarm spell. Um, it'll alert me if anything comes that's uh, nasty. A uh, wolf, a bear... Anything like that. Huh, that's a mod of handy. Uh, you one of them magic people? Oh, yes, very much so. I love magic. I even studied at the Isle of Insight. Y you don't say. I heard about that place. There was uh, the innkeeper's uh, son uh, went there at one point. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, he came back uh, a couple years later. Uh, I, th I think he didn't do too well there and. uh by the time he uh, he got back, he you know uh, he was kind of embarrassed and was trying to prove himself. And uh, you know he, I guess it's probably been about a month ago he went up to uh, up to the Fane Shrine to to prove himself. But uh, ain't nobody seen him since. Oh. The Isles probably killed him. Those patchouli scented bastards do things like that. Well, that's uh, that's kind of dark. I I was going to say I hope he um, finds his way back. I'm sure he's just taking a little bit, like he took his time with the Isle of Insight. Yeah, could could be, could be. I don't guess you got any of them. Uh, you know, I, I don't come across many uh, magic peoples, but I heard they was uh, 
uh, sometimes uh, some uh, some magic users like uh, you are able to like tell where a person is or you know tell if they're doing okay um you know can you do anything like that i mean i'm sure that he'd uh sure to appreciate it find out anything any information he can about his son um i can certainly try um actually even better than that i have a magical item that'll allow us to ask a question to see if he's okay oh you know actually, it's gonna get the the magic eight ball i forget what it looks like actually it's like a little statuette statue right? of an elf woman holding up an orb yeah uh, and juliet is going to ask it um is the innkeeper's son okay should have specified which innkeeper but okay <laughs> is that eating the pudding <laughs> so it's it's a silver statue of an elven woman holding this black orb above her head and as you ask that question the these purplish grayish clouds start forming on the surface of this uh inside the surface of this uh, uh black sphere and uh after a while they uh form the words it is beyond my sight oh goodness um you said he went to do his adulthood ritual yeah uh, yeah that's, that's what i heard well if he's inside there and it's on another level of existence if you will it, i might not be able to find them anyway oh well that's unfortunate but uh i understand i, I think well i tried that's the best i can do um oh speaking of which do you have any talents or anything that you i i see that you're an experienced sailor but have you ever tried something like uh, going to the Isle of Insight or uh, another career path that you've thought of? <laughs> no, nothing like that. I mean, I'm uh, I'm just a simple boat captain. I mean, my daddy was a boat captain before me, and his uh, daddy was a boat captain before him. And uh, this uh, this boat over here, uh, the River's Blessing, it's been passed down my family for you know two generations. It's uh, really the only life I know, and I make a pretty good, uh, honest living out of it. Oh, well, that's great. Um, if you don't mind me prying, what sort of cargo do you normally transport up and down? Oh, just this and that, depending on uh, what anybody's selling. You know, usually a lot of times... Oranges? Uh, uh, I, smell? I, I don't know what an orange is, uh, spooky dark elf lady. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> A lot, of times, okay. a lot of times uh, we move, uh, you know, trees down, a uh, lot of pitch, you know, for sealing boats. And, you know, they, they use it a lot of time in some alchemical things, I hear. Uh, we make pretty good money from that. You know, sometimes we move in furs down the river. You know, they get captured uh, and uh, processed up in, uh, in Faybarrow in uh, Fayview. And then a lot of times what we'll do is uh, when we go back up the river, we'll get a lot of, you know, spices that come in from uh, Luscane or Milan. You know, those are pretty good centers for, you know, finding some, some more of the exotic spices and some, uh, some fruits and vegetables. And, uh, you know, we move them back up river and sell them in uh, Fadel. And sometimes even Estermead, we go as far as uh, north of that. Just depends on... Uh, who's selling and of course who's buying but it's a pretty good living well i'm glad we have you as our boatsman because uh we would never be able to get down here so let me offer my appreciation again oh well that's uh girl i really appreciate it but uh you know you paid me and you know most time that's uh thanks enough but uh <laughs> it, it's nice to hear thank you i sure do appreciate it yeah the last bowl man both men I had was horrible. Oh yeah, you do a lot of do a lot of traveling on the water. Twice, um, one of them was just absolutely terrible. Well, I'm uh, sorry to hear that, but you know it. Uh, yeah, he takes was all human. Kinds. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I can't say that I've had many dealings with humans, but uh, the humans I have uh, had dealings with, you know, they've been pleasant enough. Almost as bad as elves, yeah. I know. They are grossly over-muscled. Exactly. 
They look like goblin heads on earthen bodies. It is very freakish. I do not care for it. You don't even appreciate cheese. I, I don't know that that's all... Uh, if that's uh, fair there, uh, friend dwarf. I mean, it, it takes all kinds to make this world go around. I mean, people's just people. You can't go uh, slandering the whole race just because of some dealings you've had with a couple. Yeah, of course you can. Well, this is common knowledge. Everybody knows they always carry bagels on their person. Talia's going to throw something at, at Alunidas just to Who try to Alunidas? make him stop because he's being I ridiculous. Okay, she's going to throw something at Jacques McSweeney. Okay, attack Can I try to catch it midair? Can I try to catch it midair? Uh, roll an attack roll. To catch it midair? No, uh, Talia. Uh, I don't remember. Be a uh, improvised weapon. That's a seven. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going to whiff as uh, you throw, like, say, a, like a small pebble or something at a Lunados. Uh, Vic, if you want to try to make like a uh, dexterity check to try to catch it out of the air, you can. It's a ten. No, it goes through your fingers and hits the uh, ground. Mm-hmm. Okay, I guess uh, being tall doesn't mean I can always play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't go for for practice the traditional dwarven martial art of pushing things, and he goes to just stand next to a tree and push on it. <laughs> okay, so uh, I applaud. Anything uh, else you want to do tonight? Just a casting an alarm spell for me. Okay, and then, uh, let's see, Alexander is playing uh, his flute at the boat with a performance check of eight. Um, Ten. Easy. Okay. Uh, I get plus two from the actual item. Sorry. Uh, okay. I just felt like being snappy for no good reason. So uh, you try to play like a, like a traditional like elf song, and you're not all that familiar with it. And um, you're hitting some wrong notes. That is a thoroughly mediocre performance, Yoman. As a grunt pushing it against the tree. All right, so uh, we'll say everybody settles down for the night. Um, between your group and the uh, the boatmen here, you're able to do pretty short um, shifts. But the uh, the night's going to go on uh, without really uh, anything happening. You hear some stuff out in the woods, but you know you think it's probably critters. You're going to get up the the next morning with the sunrise and have some breakfast and load the boat back up and make off down the river. Pretty uneventful. You're going to see a uh, couple of boats um, moving down river in front of you, but uh, they don't appear to be heavily as loaded, so they kind of lose you in the distance. Uh, you're also going to notice that um, you're going to see one or two boats moving up river, being pulled by horses during the day. Obviously, it looks like it's pretty slow going. But... Uh, Eventually, the sun begins to set, and Yev finds another large clearing near the river. As you get closer, uh, you see this appears to be a campsite uh, that's been used by many traveling the river. Um, there's even some wooden lean-tos here, and a large fire pit and some stumps set up uh, around it for seats. So they take the uh, boat, and they uh, run it up on shore, tie it up to a tree. And uh, you set up camp and begin dinner, and uh, you're going to hear some movement in the woods. Uh, at least the Lunados is, because his passive perception is going to pick it up. And uh, to the edge of the woods, uh, about 40 yards away from your campsite, you're going to see some movement. Man. Luna's going to say, what is that? You got somebody trying to steal my cheese? <laughs> point to where I saw the movement. Okay, at this point, uh, it's, you know, a little bit after dusk. You can still see a little, uh, uh, some outlines of the trees. And, uh, you're going to see, uh, three half-elves exit the woods, and, uh, they're heading for the camp. And, uh, two of the men are carrying a deer that is, uh, hanging by its legs, uh, on a pole. And the, uh, half, half-elf in front is going to raise his hand to wave at you, and, he uh, calls out, uh, Pace, Pace, friends, uh, we don't mean you no harm. Uh, we're just hunting and uh, came up here to the steading to 
camp for the night. Uh, can we uh, share your fire and you can have some of our meat? And he points back to the deer. Uh, do I hear this? Yep. Immediately as you say that, I'm like, of course, uh, if you share food. You may always sit by our fire, dear half creatures. And uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah, we'd love some fresh meat. Uh, we got a fire and some ale if you fancy it. And the uh, half elves are going to approach uh, you. And the man who spoke before says, uh, we much appreciate it. Um, I'm Eris, and uh, these are my brothers over here, Matt and Wren. And uh, the two brothers who are carrying this deer nod to you as they uh, start putting together a spit to roast the deer over your fire. And uh, Yev's going to get up and pours a couple of uh, cups of ale from a cast they brought off the uh, boat and walks over to Eris and says, uh, I'm Yev, uh, captain of the boat over here. Uh, we're taking goods down river. These uh, people over here, and he points to you, and he's going to hand the cup over to Eris. Uh, he takes it and finishes it in a log, swallows, says, uh, Thank you. Hunting's thirsty work. And he has the cup back and walks over to the deer and pulls out this long, wicked, curved knife and uh, begins to skin it. And Yev's going to come back over by the fire and, and sit down. But uh, after... So what kind of game are you hunting here? Only deer. So uh, as um, Eris is cutting into this thing with a knife and he says, uh, Really, anything that uh, is worth eating. Got lucky with this uh, big buck here. You look over, and now that you get a good look at this uh, deer, it looks like it probably weighs maybe about 250 pounds. It's like a big, big buck. And uh, he says, uh, we probably get a, you know, a lot of meat after out of this. Uh, lasts us a long time after we salt. Mm, I remember when I used to hunt. We used to eat um, the uh, tails of rats, and we would make them into necklaces out of their bones. It was very good meat, a bit salty naturally, so salting it was a bit difficult. I can appreciate good hunting. So you 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 say you you hunt and eat rats? I used to when I was about eight years old. Then I moved to spiders and other creatures. Huh. And he just kind of gives you like this, like a look that like a mixture of astonishment and like tinged with disgust and he doesn't really know what to say to you <laughs> I will blast I my back teach you. oh boy this again I like to put my hands over my ears <laughs> so uh Harris is going to look over to the bard and, or over to Alexander and says uh, play louder we, we hadn't had any uh, any music in a good long time we've been out here in the woods and I can't remember the last time uh we uh, heard any musicians. Yes, and everyone knows that the volume is associated with quality. Play very loud, human. I rolled an 11. The um, 13? So it's a little bit more no. passable. You start playing a song that you know, but uh, as you like try to play really loudly, your embouchure gets kind of screwed up, so you're squeaking notes, and uh, you're going to see Red and Matt start uh, like dancing like a little jig amongst themselves. Yes, I'd be like, you will dance. I will not do the traditional dwarven dance. And he starts doing push-ups. Can I like be upset, like stand up, and like take an instrument and try to play as well? Um, like, this um, is how it's done. Uh, Why don't go to campfire? Somebody like yeah, I don't know, maybe something laying down, any instrument around. One of uh, Alexander's. Uh, Alexander, do you have any any of your instruments laying out? What do you mean? I only have two. Yeah, like the second one. Uh, I don't have it laying on the ground. So we'll uh, say that uh, like human does not mean he is swine. So we'll say that Vicalia picks up a couple of sticks and starts beating together. Give me a performance check. <laughs> that's the 14. Oh, that's not bad. So, uh, you, uh, start beating these sticks together and you're able to keep pretty good time with it. I'm gonna try to, uh, do like this, like, old, uh, drow song in the background, like, Oh, to like try to uh, make it better. Um, sure. Take a sad song and make it better. <laughs> That's a five. I did not sing in years. How do you have a plus three? Apparently. 
How do you have a plus three to performance? Oh, because you're charisma, you're a paladin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you start trying to sing in this uh, traditional, I guess, drow song, and uh, most of the, the drow songs are kind of like uh, in minor keys and dissonant because uh, you're kind of terrible and evil, um, <laughs> which is not jiving too well with this... Uh, like current folk realm that uh, Alexander's playing. Yeah, but, I think uh, didn't play apparently since she was in choir way years ago. But uh, you just keep on going because you're you. I believe. <laughs> so uh, a couple of hours go by and you're sitting around drinking ale and Eris here is telling you some hunting stories about, you know, some of the, the bigger game that he's killed here. Uh, between um, some deer and a cougar and uh, his most expansive and uh, like most detailed stories about uh, them coming across a bear in the uh, the woods here uh, that attacked them that they were able to slay but that's been a couple of years ago and you know Matt and Ren jump in and embellish the story but uh, you have your mill and everybody is full of venison except for uh, Jacques McSweeney who's probably eating leaves or something no he ate venison oh he did wow really oh yeah hardcore holy cow Jacques method as fuck Uh, (laughs) when in Fadel I guess are you gonna have a dwarf you eat meat they have much much grease in my beard my very big bushy dwarven beard you can see I am a dwarf I have a beard do you have to describe it as dwarven? You are a dwarf. Isn't everything you do kind of dwarven? Yes. But to be authentic, I must describe it fully as dwarven. See, these these are my dwarven feet. Very right. dwarven they are. Maybe you should write a book or something about dwarves. Call it like Atlas Shrugs or something. <laughs> and Vic yeah. obviously was in Gloom Club as a child. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> All right. Um, so the the night wears on and after the trip here and the the battles in the fae you're pretty weary and the boat hasn't been all that comfortable during the day um and even though the hunters and the boatmen are laughing and getting loud as they uh drink um you're start starting to get tired and um you're all going to lay down for the night you know at this point the the fire is getting kind of uh low but it's not all that cold here you're getting on towards you know probably mid to late fall and there's maybe like a little bit of chill in the air but not enough to see your breath and it's pretty comfortable the uh, the sounds start to die down as uh, they start to get pretty heavy and drink and um, you're all gonna lie down for the night and uh, Alexander that's uh, me when you lie down you almost instantly fall asleep as your uh, head hits your makeshift pillow here on the ground and you're going to drift off and uh, strangely you have a dream about your mom and your dad and you think it's kind of strange because you haven't thought about them in a long time and then uh, the dream is going to change the world goes dark and you see your parents whisked away into the distance you hear them screaming then moaning and it gets softer and softer and then you see the soft glow of purple on the horizon and the air grows cold you realize you're back inside the dagger again and I think that's probably where we're going to end it for tonight okay awesome All right. but it's a day Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dungeons & Debacles podcast. If I could ask a halfling size favor, give us a 5-star rating and review on iTunes. It's the best way to support us. New episodes come out every Monday, so make sure to check your podcast app. Do you have an idea to make the podcast better? Tell us about it on Twitter or Facebook. You can also check out our website to see all the maps, lore, and characters at DungeonsAndDebaclespodcast.com. And now a word from our fantasy sponsor. I am I get you what they owe. Has a magical pestilence destroyed your farm and family through no fault of your own? I'm Hamish the Hammer, and I can get you the gold you deserve. A wizard unleashed a spell that blotted my crops and my family starved to death. 
The hammer got me the goal to rebuild my life. I have a new wife, a milk cow, and even a pig. Thank you, Hamish. Going to the town god or petitioning the leader of your village takes too long when you need gold now. My professional team of negotiators gets to the root of the problem and persuades them to do the right thing. I don't get paid unless you do. Send a raven with a message about your problem to Luskane, care of Hamish the Hammer, for a free consultation. The Hammer gets you what they owe. The music you heard on this episode was Teller of the Tells, Crowd Hammer, Long Road Ahead, At Rest, and Unseen Horrors by Kevin McLeod and Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. CreativeCommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 3.0.